Hello there, folks. This is Matt, aka Ramble Raft for Life, and I am joined with OCP Communications. Yes, it's your boy OCP back again. I know there were people who were wanting to see another collab, wanted to, <laughs> wanted to see me uh, drop by again. I know some people were thinking of another rant or something. There'll be some ranting because you know there's a lot of opportunity for that here. Uh, I know. Matt was thinking about doing a video on the films of 2018, and he wanted me to tag along, and I gladly uh, accepted. Um, sounds like fun. It's a total throwback, because I remember one of the first things he and I did, like, years ago, like, with the podcast form, like, with just the audio, was, like, films of, like, some other year or something, and then it, I think it was, like, long-ass time ago. I remember, like, splitting it up into, like, ten parts or whatever. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> also one on that's on my channel me you and Efri on the remakes well remakes yes, are coming that out one, that's the one I remember like yeah. Robocop and yeah. <laughs> but sadly a lot of those actually came true yeah the it's fun if you for those out there if you don't on my channel you rewatch those videos it's like Robocop came true and it was worse because <laughs> it wasn't yeah. Darren Aronofsky it was some uh -huh. other more loser and then Super Chuds came true. We never knew it would be Super Chuds. Nope. And there will be more remakes that we'll be talking about because it's in 2018. But <laughs> didn't run into it so that January. Uh, which we're I not going to look at like every single film because no. there's some of them that we're, we're not going to. Well, we are, but we're not going to talk about some of them because it's like, eh, there's not much to say. Yeah, and they're probably... If they say theaters, it'd probably like be like five theaters, and no one's ever heard of it. But like the ones yeah. that there's something to talk about. Like for example, yeah. Insidious, The Last T, aka Oh, Insidious the movie 4. that I'm gonna go see with my movie pass with the, with a friend of mine tomorrow night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but but by the time this is posted, it'll probably be you know way past that. But yeah, I'm gonna see that movie in the theater. So um, yeah, and you'll hear my thoughts on that and the other Insidious films someday. Uh, in the near future. I did not care for the first film, but I'm interested in giving it another watch. I just remember it being just a poor man's Poltergeist, but then I saw the remake of Poltergeist, and I'm like, you know what? Insidious is probably better. <laughs> Insidious is probably a better Poltergeist movie than the Poltergeist remake was. <laughs> yeah, I remember not minding the first one, except the ending before I understand yeah, the, the second film. Was the second film fixes that, from what I okay. understood. I heard the second movie was pretty forgettable, though, from what I've heard from some people. And then I heard, surprisingly, the third film wasn't that bad. But One thing I heard about Insidious The Last Key is that it is, like, the definitive last film. That's what I kept hearing from people. Like, it actually does end it. Like, the, the door is locked. It's, it's over. You know, and if that is the case, I'll, I'll have a lot of respect for that. Because when a franchise does that, it knows when it needs to end, and it stays dead. That's something that I do appreciate. Unlike a lot of this other shit, like I don't, I don't know if Hellraiser is on here or not, or oh, the we'll, next. We'll mention it, yeah. Or the other ch next Children of the Corn film. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they we, can't stop making those for some reason. <laughs> we'll be mentioning some of those as we go along, but um, isn't this one a prequel though? Oh, oh, I thought it was the fourth film in the franchise. I mean, it's the fourth one, but is I think it takes place before the first movie. Oh. So it's a, it is a prequel. Well, I'll take I back was, whatever I said. Because <laughs> I thought Lin Shay's character died in the second or something film. I, I thought. Oh, so maybe this is like the last film in terms of oh, we're tying up all the loose ends. Does I think? Because I thought the third one was a prequel, and then this one's a prequel. Okay. Well, that's gonna be interesting. <laughs> I better make sure I binge watch those because I can be. Like, what? <laughs> what is going on? For one, that's what from what I understood, the first one and the second one. I looked one, at the synopsis and it says it takes place in nineteen fifty three, so okay. you're right on the money. But I don't know. I'm sort of getting burned out on ghost story movies, but hey, yeah. there's been some good ones. Deliver us from evil was really good, even yes. though they got trashed. But hey, we'll look forward to Mike's thoughts on that. And well, it's gotta be better than Incarnate. Well, right? yeah. yeah, I'm sure it will be, because that was a piece of shit. <laughs> it was a disappointing piece of shit. That was worse, worse, because 
that's an actor from Battle of Los Angeles, Aaron Eckhart, that deserves a lot more work. But and the idea was like a dreamscape, ver you know, a version of dreamscape that was like a horror film. Yeah. So and it was disappointing, really shitty ending. Well, it was WWE Studios, so. <laughs> oh, the figures then. <laughs> But these other ones, not much to say. The strange one, something with, don't know, some Sounds drama. Sounds like a great name for a horror film. <laughs> but it's but, a drama. you know, it's not a horror movie. Stratton, some action thriller. Starring Dominic Cooper, directed by Simon West, that oh. went nowhere, and I've never heard a single person talk about it, even though it supposedly yeah. came out. The Commuter, uh, non-stop on a train, <laughs> as it seems like, <laughs> is the same director and same star. I wasn't the biggest fan of Nonstop. I didn't hate it, but I just felt that some of the writing was a bit. I was I was more of a fan bad. than you are. So there you go, folks. It's another movie. Some people ask, "Do we ever disagree on stuff?" That's another one. Nonstop. The See, trailers just did nothing for me with the commuter. Right. It just looked generic. Looked like another Liam Neeson thriller with the same basic plot, and. Um, didn't look that, like it was going to be that action-packed, but I, I like Liam Neeson. I like Vera Farmiga uh, from uh, the Conjuring films, and Sam Neill, you know, but Sam Neill was an escape plan, so, but I also like that a little bit more than you, so there's another <laughs> one. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true, yeah. I like Nonstop more than him. He likes his deep plan a lot more than me, but was Vera Farmiga in the Conjuring films? I thought it was her. I could be wrong. Oh, yeah, with a different you're right. actress. You're right. I just that's funny because Patrick Wilson. No, that is her. Yeah, Patrick yeah, Wilson. Patrick also Wilson in is in this too. <laughs> so both Conjuring stars. Maybe I'll give this a look one day, but I'm not. I'm not. Maybe if it's cheap prices or VOD, because I like the director. He did the House this, of Wax. Yeah, this is like this is like a VOD thing for me. Even though I do have a movie pass, it's like the only theater that's showing this right now is the one over at the Vancouver Mall. And I don't really want to take a bus all the way over there or have my friend, you know, drive over. It's just not, you know. Worth it. The time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this might be a movie that I wouldn't be surprised if it's just an okay film, but I'm not mm -hmm. in a rush to see it. But maybe, maybe one day. With but something like City, it could suck, but I, I want to try to use my movie pass to see horror films in the theater. Because sometimes, you know, that can be a whole different sort of experience that you can't replicate. Uh, right. on your computer screen as Good, for, for better or worse <laughs> as for the commuter it's yeah uh, no I don't think many people talked about it anyway so we won't no. be alone the other Proud movie, Mary Proud Mary it's directed by Babar the elephant or something no no it's some guy named Babak Najafi uh, it's got Taraja P. Taraja P. Henson uh, Danny Glover Xander Berkeley. And Neil McDumbass, so from Street Fighter, Legend of Kung Lee, and a bunch of other movies yes, that he sucked in for the most part, except for the Captain America, uh, the first Avenger. Yeah, which is a surprise. <laughs> the new Madonna <laughs> is, uh, he's kind of like, he's the kiss of cent. death. He's <laughs> kind of like Vinnie Jones. Yeah. <laughs> but. The when they star in that movie, they're a kiss of death. Yeah, because, I mean, this is the same guy that was in Red 2, The Marine 3, Paul Blart Mall Cop 2, uh, fucking mm -hmm. Legend of Comely, 88 Minutes, yeah. a lot of winners. So, Proud Mary, from what I read from the synopsis, it's pretty much that movie, Gloria. Uh, that was like an, a film that was like, a, I think in 1980, and then it was remade again with uh, Sharon Stone in the 90s or the early 2000s. I think it was the late 90s. And it's a sort, sort, sort of, I guess, like an, a black exploitation version of it, but like in the 2000s. Hmm. It just didn't interest me that much. Um, I think Taraja P. Henson is pretty well known for her a role in some show called Empire, which I, I don't watch. So, um, it's interesting that Xandra Berkeley's still getting work, because I remember he's like, there's a guy who's in stuff like Within the Rock. <laughs> and now he's in like films that are in theaters. But wasn't he in T2 as like the dad, or what, the stepdad or something? Yeah, he got, got his uh, yeah. mouth 
uh, stabbed through by the T-1000 yeah. by Jeanette Goldstein. But he was trying to get some milk, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> trying to get some milk. And I think he was at the end of, he was in Candyman. Oh, you know, yeah. The girl, when she He's was... He's been in a lot of films, surprisingly. Like, a lot of different variety of movies, Sandra Berkeley. Yeah, I think he got more success nowadays because he's on that TV show, The Walking Dead, at least for oh. a little bit, and that's a big yeah. popular show, so that might be why too. I couldn't get into that show. Like, I have season one, and I haven't really, you know, gone further. But it's just, I don't know. I mean, the practical good effects are good. And... <laughs> good luck. Good luck watching that. <laughs> Probably. I got a lot of other stuff I'd rather watch than The Walking Dead. Primary can't say much. And most of these movies, uh, a drama named Freak Show from IFC Films. Yeah, I guess with Proud Mary, she's a successful hit woman working for an organized crime family. She meets a young boy. So that it's very similar to the film Gloria. Sounds like Leon the Professional, too. Yeah, hit. similar to that, too. After that, Freak Show, IFC Films, I know nothing about. Some drama. Uh, Again, Fap another thing you think would be a horror movie. What's up with <laughs> Shell Factory is releasing a movie called Humor Me. I do oh. Some comedy with Elliot Gould. I like Ellie Elliot Potts. Gould. It's nice to see him again, but that's nothing that I'd see in the theater. It probably isn't getting a theatrical release either. Annie Potts is also in it. Yeah, it's like Annie Potts, yeah. Elliot Gould, I don't even remember the last movie he was in. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time. Uh, these other movies, some historical drama, Vizanti, whatever. Some Japanese uh, animated anime. movie called Mary and the Witch's Flower. The next recognizable film is 12 Strong. That's pretty much it takes place after 9-11 and it's a bunch of soldiers going overseas riding on horses starring Chris Hemsworth and Michael Shannon. And that's something I would see in the theater when yeah. you have films dealing with 9-11. It has to be sort of a certain... Frame of mind. Gotta be in a certain it. mood. Certain yeah, mood. gotta be a certain mood for it. Also, horses, you know, got soldiers and horseback. I'm like, if I want that, I'll just watch Rambo 3. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, same here. There's been some good dramas <laughs> on 9 11, Rain Over Me with Adam Sandler. Yes, that one really surprised me. Uh, that's uh, one of the first films I can point to that I saw where it's like, oh, Adam Sandler, you know, actually pull off dramatic roles. Uh, but then there's others like World Trade Center that wasn't much. No, and I'm not going to see 9-11 with Charlie Sheen. Or has he gone back to calling himself Charles Sheen because he wants to be known as a serious actor? Because uh, I remember that, like yeah. in the early 2000s or late 90s, it was no longer Charlie Sheen, it was Charles Sheen. Yeah, it feels like post-mortem and post -mortem. under pressure. <laughs> what was the other title? Bad Day Around the Block or something? Yeah, Bad Day Around the Block. I like that one, though. I think it was pre that's a pretty decent film for what it is. I remember not mining postmortem because there was like I an seen that. movie. It was like one of the better ones I thought, but I haven't seen it in a while. But twelve so strong, strong just doesn't sound like that strong of a film to me. I, I I just I'm not interested in that kind of thing. William Faulkner's also in the cast too, so that's that's, that's another guy flag. that's like. He was in Lone Ranger, Independence Day 2, and Super Chuds. Yeah. <laughs> like, three last disasters of cinema. Then you have Den of Thieves, which look, that looked like a direct video film. Yeah, that looked... I'm not... I don't know why anybody would even waste their money on that. I like Gerard Butler, but he's not getting the roles he should. Because no. he got to be partnered with 50 Cent, who's not worth a penny, in my opinion. And... Once again, 50 Cent, whether it be Righteous <laughs> Kill or Estate Plan, which I know Mike's a fan of. I well, he wasn't that great it. in that, so, you know, hey. He was uh, miscast in Escape Plan. Remember correctly, he was just like this guy on the phone or something? Or he some, was the something tech like guy. That? He was the computer guy. Yeah, he was guy. the tech guy, which is absolutely unrealistic. It's about, that's about as believable as Tara Reid as a scientist, like in the Alone in the Dark. It's Pretty not even much. believable in the, in the slightest. Yeah, like a lot of people, when 50 cents in a movie, nine times out of ten, it'll suck. So, Den of Thieves, not something I'll give a watch in theaters unless I saw yeah, it. I don't, even, I don't even know if I'd see that in BOD. I have no interest in Den of Thieves. <laughs> well, I mean, we'll, I'll see any, almost any movie if it's free. So, maybe if it's free, <laughs> but 
<laughs> but I mean, there's plenty of other films I can watch for, for free. free. Exactly. If any of you are looking forward to Dan the Thieves, feel free to say why. And I don't mean I don't that know. as a knock. I don't, think I'm just anybody. Curious. <laughs> I don't mean that as a knock. I'm just curious for anyone who feels that way. I'm what curious too. I'm really curious to see if there is anybody watching this video that is actually really looking forward to Maybe Dan they're big fans of Gerard Butler, which I like Gerard Butler, but he needs better work. Yeah. Totally. And after that, not much to say about Forever My Girl. Never heard about it. It's a romantic musical. Pad we got Jessica Roth in it, though, who was in Happy Death Day. So. Cool. I look forward don't to think I see review. it, but yeah. <laughs> I look forward to my review. He'll do a marathon, Jessica Roth. <laughs> yeah, no. I like her, but not that much. Really, then, that's recognizable movie is Maze Runner, The Death Cure, which I haven't seen any of the Maze Runner. I haven't seen any of the Maze Runner movies, although Dylan O'Brien, I thought, would have been a good choice to maybe play Spider-Man, um, but th they went with Tom Holland, and I think he's doing a good job. So What else has he been out. in? Uh, I'm him? trying to remember. He was he was in Teen Wolf, that's TV series on MTV. Oh, okay. And, uh, you know, a few other things. Uh, but he was more, he was well known for being on Teen Wolf, and then he he was in the internship. He had a bit role in that. Oh, okay. He was in the film Deepwater Horizon, and he was an American Assassin, and I haven't seen that yet. I, that's a movie I'll see someday down the road. Michael yeah. Keaton, yeah, Michael you know, because I'm, I'm just such a huge fan of Michael Keaton, even if it's like a little bit role. I mean, he had a bit role in the other guys, and pretty much stole the show. So um, maybe he, you know, might be a good part of that movie but maze runner films i haven't seen a single one of them either um that's directed by a ball so you know if it sucks balls well you can blame the director because <laughs> he's west ball um but uh it's just i don't know I, it's just, it's it, it's based on a series of books i think that was like made for young adults so it's yeah. the male version of a hunger games <laughs> or something <laughs> With a male lead, I, I don't. They did a ton of those. Like the Hunger Games came out, and then every single young adult franchise, like YA novel, fran you know, franchise was adapted into films. Like it was just greenlit like immediately. Uh, Maze Runner, Divergent. <laughs> was Percy Jackson one of them too? Yeah, I think yeah. so. But I think that came out before Hunger Games. And the Percy Jackson, I think the first film underperformed, but then it did okay. Then it did not well enough to have a sequel, I think. But then that didn't do very well at all. And then, and then they just stopped after that. And we're getting the February, and the next recognizable film is a movie I know you mentioned to me about, uh, Winchester. Yeah. Winchester. I'm definitely going to check this out. Uh, another film I'm, I'm planning on checking out with my friend. Actually, on Thursday, like before it comes out, because uh, one of the teachers is showing it. So nice showings on Thursday night. Which, I, more theaters are doing that, like, before the movie comes out, like, the official release date, they'll, they'll have some showings on Thursday night. And not, like, midnight, just midnight showings, like, 7 o'clock, you know, stuff like that. So, this one, I'm curious about, because I, I like the concept, uh, the whole different, this, this Winchester house, where there's all these, I think, 13 different rooms, and in each one of them, I think a ghost was captured in there, according to legend or whatever. Um, and according to the script for this movie, um, and, uh, Helen Mirren's in it and it's directed by the Spearg brothers, which I don't know what they, they have done. They did the before. Daybreakers. Oh, they did Daybreakers. But they also did the last, uh, Jigsaw movie as well. They did that film Undead as well, which I know, I don't think you liked. No. And they did, and they did Jigsaw, which looked crap. And they did Predestination, some film with Ethan Hawke that I... N never heard of. I've heard good things about it. I like Daybreakers, but mm -hmm. I didn't see Jigsaw, the new one which they directed. So I didn't either because I don't really. I'm I'm, I'm all burned. I'm I'm all sawed out with saw films. I just don't really give a shit. That's another franchise to me that could just stay dead. Like, what else are you gonna do with it? I mean, it's kind of it's done. There's nowhere else to go, unless this is another prequel, and then that's not really. <laughs> anywhere to go either that's just going backwards I think, yeah, I think it is another prequel 
<laughs> but it's in the middle of one of them, three or four yeah. or something. So, but Winchester, I, I, Helen Mirren's a great actress, and to see her in this type of film is a selling point to me because she doesn't do this type of stuff very often. And I like the I like what I saw in the trailer. It looked like a lot of shot on set, on location. And it reminded me a little bit of an old school haunted house film, like The Changeling. So it could be terrible, but I mean, comparison to some of the other horror films I have seen trailers for from this year, this looked like one of the more promising ones to me. Yeah, it looks curious. Uh, granted, like I said before, I'm a little bit burned out on the ghost story type of horror, yeah. but it looked pretty decent. I got to give credit. Helen Mirren, like you said, is a good actress. And, you know, the Spirit Brothers, they bring the sort of stuff they had with Daybreakers. Could be a decent movie. Yeah. And I know it's not entirely based on the true Winchester house. They had to take some creative liberty, so to speak, but it's still one of those things that I, I think it's a good idea for a horror film. And, it, and uh, I definitely think 13 Ghosts took inspiration from this legend. Because think about it, 13 Rooms, 13 Ghosts. Okay, I didn't know it was 13 you know? Rooms. I think it's 13 Rooms, I think. I could mm -hmm. be wrong. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of different rooms and stuff. I could be completely wrong with the 13 rooms thing. And if I am, that's my bad. <laughs> Helen Mirren convinces herself she is cursed by the ghosts of those who died at the hands of Winchester firearms. Yep. Because the widow of famed gun manufacturer, William Winchester. Or like mm -hmm. the Winchester rifle. Yeah. Yeah, could be interesting. Worth a look. Uh, There's multiple different rooms. I'm trying to check here how many rooms are in this Winchester house. Um, it might not be 13. But every Friday 13th, a large bell on the property is rung 13 times. Well, maybe there is 13 rooms, because expensive imported chandelier originally had 12 candle holders. It was altered to accommodate 13 candles. Wall closed hooks are in multiples of 13. A spiderweb pattern stained glass window contains 13 colored stones. The drain covers on the sinks also have 13 holes. So it's the prequel to number 23. <laughs> it's number 13. <laughs> but it's the 13. <laughs> it's the 13. Oh, and it has, it has more than 13 rooms. Like, it has 161 rooms and stuff like that. But maybe it's 13 rooms that were haunted, you know, haunted or something. I'm not an expert on the Winchester House. I didn't. I didn't say that it was. <laughs> yeah, but it does sound interesting. Uh, it sounds a lot more interesting than Armed or uh, the 1517 to Paris. <laughs> yeah, the only thing on Armed that's interesting is Mario Van Peebles yeah. stars and directs in it. But that's probably a film that more than likely will be in five theaters and be on VOD or something. I mean, look at the poster. It looks cheap. <laughs> so. Yeah, not much I can say. Although I do like Marvel Van Peebles. Uh, Fifty Shades Freed never bothered, never cared about the Fifty Shades movies. The 50, a, Fifty Shades of fucking, you know. What, what can I say? I'm a guy. So, of course, <laughs> I don't care about Fifty Shades of... I, I just remember gross stories associated with the first film. Like how there were like stories of uh, theater employees finding middle-aged women fingering themselves or whatever in the theater, no, which is just disgusting. Or, or one story where this guy, he was a truck driver, and he was driving on the road, and he drove past this drive-in that was showing Fifty Shades of Grey, and he, there was like one sex scene or something, and he was distracted, and he like crashed or something like that. It was crazy. Jesus. <laughs> So bad. I don't think anybody people. got hurt or anything, but it was just one of those, I thought it was just kind of an intriguing, funny story. So bad as doing attempted assaults on people. <laughs> but, yeah, it's assaulting that poor movie theater's eyes in their, in their uh, sanity. Because they go in and walk in and just find that, you know, that awful image of just people fingering themselves and then go, I, I haven't seen anybody do anything, but I... When I was working in a theater at AMC, I was cleaning up the theater. I forgot what the movie it was. 
and I went in and under the under one of the seats, I found the empty box for a vibrator. Was it Nightmare on Elm Street remake? No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> but but it was I, I yeah it was like one of those uh, vibrator dildo things or something. So it was it was just like okay all right. So I guess somebody was having a good time. <laughs> I'm I'm glad they remembered to take it with them though and didn't leave that behind. Should you the clean up. <laughs> exactly. That would have been even worse. Be a funny story. But... <laughs> well, I, I remember there's this guy, he was he was so asleep, and I forgot what movie it was, but he was so fast asleep. Number no that... <laughs> I thought he was dead. Because I I, I I was saying, hey, sir, like I was, I was, you know, talking to him at normal level. I even tried to do some things uh, to try to wake him up. And, and, and I called uh, over the, 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 uh, I'm trying to think of the right word. I used, I used my walkie talkie and I'm like, uh, I don't know what to do here. Is there a certain code for something? I think somebody in this theater might. Uh, might need some attention. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my manager comes in and he, he grabs my broom and pokes him with it and then he wakes up. Because <laughs> it was long after the movie was over. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not my own street movie. <laughs> but uh, Fifty Shades Freed, not much to say about that. Other than not going to watch it. Vibrator Why? porn for women. <laughs> Peter Rabbit, that looked like a remake of that movie Hop. <laughs> yeah, and that sucked. <laughs> and the advertising for this is cringy. Sony, come on. Making all these different like fake posters with the rabbit in place of a certain character. So instead of Wonder Woman, it's Wonder Rabbit or something. Yeah, it's just pretty bad. <laughs> also, I don't like James Corden. I don't understand why his show, his his talk show, got so popular. I I don't get it. Like his whole shtick when he gets like famous actors and they reenact scenes together, and I'm like, that's just lame. Like if I want to see those scenes, I'll just watch the scenes. Why do I need to see the scenes reenacted with no budget and and with James Corden just doing a shitty job? <laughs> Oh, it's Sony. No wonder it looks like shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I remember Peter Rabbit, though. I remember I had this VHS of a Peter Rabbit cartoon like from way back in the day, and like another another cartoon, I think, that was... So I remember Peter Rabbit, and I think I remember reading Peter Rabbit books when I was a kid, but it just doesn't interest me. I, it just It's hop, but with Peter Rabbit. From the director of Fired Up... <laughs> And oh, the 2014 great. Annie movie. So from the director of F U. Yeah, that's what the poster was. Yeah, the and worst friends with benefits. <laughs> great. Fuck that. Other bunch of movies they haven't heard of. Cree, not Creed. Cree, some action romance movie. Monster Family. <laughs> Monster Family, some anime movie that looked like. Hotel Transylvania ripoff. But like in, in the UK. <laughs> it's like the <laughs> British Hotel Transylvania. Transylvania. Golden Exits. Something. Thankfully not Golden Showers. <laughs> well, uh, that was the case R. Kelly would be starring in that one. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm going to piss on you. <laughs> <laughs> sure, that's, that's a very fun Chappelle show. <laughs> and then Black Panther. That's the big movie of February. I'll be seeing that with my cousin. Um, I'll go into it with low expectations. I like the Black Panther character in, in Civil War. Yeah. I thought he was pretty cool in that. But, but some of the trailers I saw for this, Chadwick Boseman's line delivery was kind of stiff. So, I don't know. So, we'll see. Michael B. Jordan is in it. I know a lot of people are, you know, oh, this is, you know, making up for Fantastic Four. And I'm like, I never thought he was a bad, he did a bad job in that movie anyway. And I don't think that film is the worst movie ever anyway. I mean, there are worse Fantastic Four things out there. Like this cringe-inducing Johnny uh, Storm rap from the 1994 cartoon where Brian Austin Green is rapping 
and it's called Flame On. That's that's worse than anything in Fan Four Stick. Yeah, that's true because I've seen that clip. <laughs> Black Panther. I don't care for the director who directed Creed. Creed. Creed the. Uh, Crud. Incredible prick. <laughs> I hated Creed. The trailers, maybe it'll be a good movie. Marvel has a good track record. Speaking yeah. my own personal point of view, but the film looks mediocre. Maybe because the music, the trailers, the music and the trailers they use. or Yeah, the hip-hop music and stuff like that. I don't mind hip-hop, but I thought it was a shitty song they used for the trailers yeah. so far. And I don't know, it just looked mediocre, like... CGI that people. I make. think I think Michael B. Jordan might not be that great of a villain. That's my thing. I know he has weird hair. At least the one trailer I saw, it was like goofy looking hair. Yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty almost buck out there hairstyle. <laughs> almost buckweed <laughs> type of hair. Okay. <laughs> Three <laughs> times a daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie Three Murphy. times a made it. Yeah. Once, twice, three times a made it. <laughs> so there goes Black Panther. He's fighting Buckwheat. That's what it is. Not Michael B. Jordan. He's playing uh, Buckwheat. Other movies, anime and film called Early Man. Don't know anything about. Well, I mean, it's the guys who did Ardman Animation who did uh, Rawls and Gromit. So. Oh, okay. Okay, I've seen one of those spots on YouTube. With that type of animation. Mm -hmm. uh, drama called Loveless. Is this, is this, is this about uh, the Kenneth Branagh character from Wild Wild West? <laughs> <laughs> it's a prequel. It's all about his rise to power. No. No. And then a comedy <laughs> drama called The Party. Don't know anything about. A drama called Nostalgia. <laughs> I, I love that. <laughs> really enough. Uh, Pure Flix has a movie called Samson. And I've never seen a Pure Flix movie. Rucker Hauer and Billy Zane. <laughs> yeah, Samson, Pure Flix. I've heard and seen reviews, and they seem god awful movies. Absolutely god awful. I'm not watching a Pure Flix movie. Just not. God's you not dead. Pay me to watch that shit. No way. God's not dead, too, and all that. No, that, God's dead. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have Game Night, which is a black comedy. Film. I like I like I like the trailers for this, so um, I'm really curious about this one. Stars Jason Bateman, Rachel McAdams, Kyle Chandler. A group of friends meet for their game night, and they find themselves in the middle of an actual murder mystery. Mm -hmm. Which I don't know why this reminded me a little bit of Clue for some reason. Yeah, it does. It it, it reminded me a little bit of Clue as well, but it, it seems like it's doing enough of its own right. spin on it. Right. That you know, it's still its own movie. Right. I liked I, from the trailers. I, I I laughed more than a couple times. I liked the cast. I liked the concept. Um, I think this has a lot of potential, and I, I think it's a little bit under the radar uh, compared to some of the other films that people are talking about, like that are must see films of twenty eighteen. Mm -hmm. So is this one you may give a? Oh yeah, I'll, I'll definitely to? check this out. Because this is, you know, I got the movie pass and, and I want to see it, so. I'm just wondering. Hopefully it'll be a good comedy. Hopefully I'll have a comedy that's above average out of this right. year. Because I haven't got, last year, there wasn't a single average, there, there was like an average comedy in the house. But there wasn't anything other than that. I, all the other comedies were absolutely horrible. And there's one coming out this year that looks just as awful as everything else from last year. <laughs> Which we'll get to. <laughs> but Game Night looks pretty decent. Uh, I'm not sure they're going with the whole like man who knew too little where they don't know it's a murder until at the end of the movie or if they do find out. But I guess that's why you watch the movie for. Uh, yeah, it looks interesting. New Line Cinema is helping make it. Weird, but nice to see they're kind of still around, kind of. Next movie is Annihilation, directed by Alex <laughs> Garland, starring Natalie Portman and Jennifer Jason Directed Lee. by the director of one of them, and written by the writer of one of the most overrated films the past few years, Ex Machina. 
I, I mean, I don't understand why so many critics just completely jizzed themselves over that movie. I thought it, it everything that it was talking about or covered was done better in other movies with androids, including a film that came out before it called The Machine, which is which Ex Machina is almost the same movie. Like the name of the ro- the, the android is exactly the same. <laughs> both the androids have the same name in both movies. Huh. Uh, but the machine, in my opinion, was better for me personally. It was definitely a more entertaining movie. Ex Machia is one of those pretentious as hell, boring, slow-paced movies. It thinks it's super smart, super brilliant. Thinks it's going to have some twist in the that's going to be out of left field. But I saw it coming from a mile away. And for a film that's considered to be so smart, you have lines like this: "Who are you going to call?" And some guys Ghost like Busters. Ghostbusters. I didn't even it's see supposed the movie to be this, this brilliant, smart movie. <laughs> I don't buy it. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen it, but yeah, it didn't look appealing. I want to see Turing tests or stuff like that or watch stuff with androids. I'll just watch Blade Runner again. But this one, it really didn't look interesting to me. No. It's... A group of soldiers enter an environmental disaster zone and only one soldier comes back out alive, though he is injured. In an attempt to save his life, his wife, played by Natalie Portman, Portman, volunteers for another expedition to the zone to figure out what happened to him. Didn't Alex Garland help with Dread, I think, right? Didn't he? He helped write it. Yeah. uh, Because he he also worked a lot with... Danny Boyle, because he helped write 28 Days Later and Sunshine. But I'm not sure about him as a director. You have Jennifer Jason Lee, who's in this. As a psychologist. So it's nice to see her get more work. I think she was in Amityville Awakening, though, wasn't yeah. she? The film that took forever to awake and didn't ever awaken theaters. Like Which Mike still has to see. Landed. He's the Amityville guy. <laughs> not the Amityville guy. <laughs> He's reviewed all the Amityville films, and he pissed someone off from Amityville. Yeah, so yeah, I guess, I guess you could say, guy. maybe. Yeah. I pissed off somebody who was in one of the Amityville movies, so... I guess if there is an Amityville guy, I guess I'm, I guess yeah, I'm in. Um, Annihilation, it just looks generic. It looks like a generic sci-fi thriller that doesn't really look that great. Um, I also don't like the idea that, oh, the, these super smart scientists... It, despite the fact that one of their husbands went in there into this alien bubble, because that's really what it looks like. It looks like a bubble, a giant bubble. And they walk in, he walked into that bubble before and came out and was injured and was so severely hurt they had to put him in quarantine. And then they go in through this bubble and they have no containment stuff on, no biohazard suits, nothing. Because you got to see the star's face. Above all else, even above logic, you have to see the star's face. You think by 2018 they could learn around that logic? But. Yeah, but Stranger Things doesn't have them walking around in that sh- in 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 the other world without without any uh, biohazard suits on. <laughs> Winona Ryder and the other guy, they're all wearing the suits, oh, so. Okay. I don't buy it. It's bullshit. Especially for a film written by Alex Garland, the guy who wrote the brilliant Ex Machina. So, I mean, I know that was just in the trailer. I know it's a nitpicky thing, but, like, it just turned me off on the of the film, like, immediately. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, for all we know, it's a good film, but the advertising is not selling it. No. To the point, I give a shit. Kind of reminds me of Sound of Thunder in some way. Like some of the whole sort of like we'll go into this other environment and there's these creatures or something. And plus, it has Annihilation. I mean, in yeah. the title, so yeah. <laughs> and the tradition of Amer- American Ninja for the Annihilation and Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Um, I don't think there's anything that has the, the word Annihilation in it that's good. Not At least a film, of. anyway. <laughs> Can't think of one. And Mark Ninja 4, you want to annihilate the film. Such a wasted opportunity. Michael Dudikov and Dave, David Bradley together 
and they don't even fight side by side in one scene. No, they fight each other, kind of. They fight each other, kind of, <laughs> but not really. Yeah, and then you got a giant boots. super ninja who's fucking pussy. And a guy going, so. lick my boots. <laughs> lick my ass. Yeah, you got that fucking guy. And then, of course, Mortal Kombat Annihilation. We don't really need to say anything else. That's our, that's, that hasn't already been said about Annihilation. But, destroy all expectations. But or yeah, like destroy all copies of that movie. If this is a good film, the advertiser's not selling it. No. <laughs> and uh, I... I think it's telling that it's overseas. It's coming out via Netflix. Hmm. Well, it says, uh, yeah, it says here Netflix is part of their producing. Huh. Go figure. But they're not even getting a Netflix release in theater. They're not even getting a release in theaters overseas. It seems like this is just being released in the U.S. Hmm. and then, like, on Netflix. Somewhere else. <laughs> so. It's more than Bright got. <laughs> just straight to Netflix. I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. a Netflix original, but still. I would have seen that in the theater, but... I'll check out Annihilation, because, you know, I have a movie pass, and I like sci-fi films, so... But, you know, I don't have a lot of expectations for it. Then you have a film called Every Day. I just mentioned that, because the company is Orion Pictures. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, weird. Orion is back. Uh, if you ever get to see the Balco Experiment, you get to see the Orion logo before it, which is pretty cool. Very cool. So for this, it might, the best thing might be the logo at the end. <laughs> A horror movie called The Lodgers, which I don't know what that is for a horror movie. Uh, it's directed by Brian O'Malley. It's an I Irish oh, it horror film. Oh, takes place in 1920. Yeah, 1920 rural Ireland. Anglo-Irish twins Rachel and Edward. They share a strange existence in their crumbling family estate. Each night the property becomes a domain of a sinister presence, which enforces three rules upon the twins. They must be in bed by midnight. It may not permit an outsider past the threshold. If one attempts to escape, the life of the other is in jeopardy. When troubled war veteran Sean returns to the nearby village, he's immediately drawn to the mysterious Rachel, who in turn begins who in turn begins to break the rules set out by the lodgers. That sounds really exciting. Yeah, it really does. From <laughs> Ireland. Red Sparrow, some movie action mystery. Jennifer Lawrence stars. Spy thriller. So it's a spy thriller, I guess in a way, a wannabe atomic blonde. Yeah, or a Black Widow. Black Widow movie. Because think about Black Widow, Red Sparrow. Yeah. But I mean, it's based on a book by Red Sparrow, called Red Sparrow, but yeah. And it's the same guy who directed Constantine, I Am Legend, and quite a few of the Hunter Games movies. Francis Lawrence. Yeah. I like Constantine. <laughs> yeah, I, I really enjoy Constantine. That's underrated. Saw the trailer for this. Didn't look really that interesting at all to me. I'm not super big on spy thrillers unless it's Mission Impossible or James Bond. Anything other than that, it seems like a lot of other spy thrillers seem to fall flat. Except for maybe some of the older, uh, definitely the older Jack Ryan films. You like the Tom of Blonde more than me. Yeah, I thought it was okay at the end of the road. You know, the more I thought about it, the more I it was. It, yeah, I mean, there were certain action scenes I liked, and me too. Yeah, I I would say I liked it more than you, but it was just one of those that it was disappointing though. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just laughing because the next movie is Death Wish. I'm just not a fan of Jennifer Lawrence, so that's another thing. But yeah, Death Wish. <laughs> I got pushed back to. This is, they were in March. Yeah, March. <laughs> you got the, you know, the Collider article, right? <laughs> it's racist. Yeah, because he shoots a guy who's black, even though the first guy in the trailer he attacks is a white guy under a car, but mm -hmm. he shot a black guy, so he's racist. Yeah. The first trailer for this I thought was really shitty. The second trailer was better. I don't know. I, I'm I'm not sold on Eli Roth directing this time this kind of movie. That's my thing. He's it, way out of his comfort zone. Is there an Eli Roth film you like? I can't really think of one, so that's another thing. <laughs> I mean, I'm not really a fan of what he did. He did Cabin Fever, right? Ooh, yes. Faced. Um, Hostel, Hostel Two. I'm not really a fan of those movies, so no. Eli Roth, and he's definitely not the next Wes Craven. 
Oh yeah, there was websites saying that, <laughs> but I don't He's see it, and I don't buy it. West Craven. At least Adam Green, that guy's made a couple good movies. Like the Green Inferno is just Cannibal Apocalypse. That's not Cannibal Apocalypse. Uh, this is a different Cannibal movie. Holocaust. Cannibal Holocaust. Sorry, <laughs> there's just so many fucking Cannibal movies. <laughs> cannibal Apocalypse. Cannibal Holocaust. Cannibal, cannibal Terror. Rock, your favorite. Cannibal Terror. <laughs> your favorite. See, at least with a horror guy like Adam Green, I like Digging Up the Marrow. I like Frozen, and not the anime of Frozen. I haven't seen that. This is a horror movie on a ski lift, which is pretty cool. Eli Roth, the to me, the closest was Hostel, because I liked the third act, but then that's ruined by Hostel 2, because the guy who survives dies at the beginning, because mm -hmm. Eli Roth's an idiot. It seems like he's produced more films that are better than anything he's ever directed. <laughs> The best thing he did was Thanksgiving trailer. <laughs> Dry yeah. House. Yeah. They directed. I'll agree with you on that one. But Eli Roth, I it's a weird from the direct and Joe Carney. Yeah, Joe Carnahan. Joe guy who fucked up the A team. He's, he's a did the, he did uh, who wrote The Grey, right? He directed The Grey, right? The movie that was marketed as some Liam Neeson versus Wolves movie and then it was anything but well, it's, a, Anything but. it's supposed to be a survival movie, except no one survives, so... Yeah, exactly. So it's a survival... Market as a survival film, Liam Neeson punching wolves in the face, and you don't get to see that, and nobody survives. I'd be like, oh, you're just mad. Yeah, well, when advertising lies to you, you have a right to be mad, so... Fuck the movie. Fuck the gray. Also, it's a bad idea. It's a, it takes a good idea and ruins it. Like, why do you have to do that pretentious crap at the end? People well, want to see Liam Neeson punch wolves in the face. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I've been told, no, most of them didn't. They wanted the movie they got, so. We're alone in that, Mike. Uh, apparently. <laughs> As for Death Wish. Well, Vincent D'Onofrio is in it, so you know right away he's going to be the bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> and the trailer is the good guy, but maybe he'll surprise he becomes a bad guy. <laughs> it's a twist. That's why he's, his, his, that's his why family brother gets killed, is, because is, of his brother. His brother, his brother is, is, is a bad guy. Yeah. Or his family got killed because Vincent D'Onofrio was with the bad guys. And <laughs> you owed us money and you didn't pay us, so we killed your brother's family, to Bruce Willis' family. That actually makes sense. That might be what it is. I'm calling it right now. Maybe it won't be, but if it is, you heard it here first. Death I mean, granted, I've, I can't say it looks abysmal because they're in the Hatchet films I've seen, yeah. but. Maybe I mean, be okay, but... Bruce Willis looks like he's start giving a little bit of a shit in the trailers, which does help. Um, a little bit, yeah. But I don't know. It's a giant question mark. I mean, it's going to be hard. I mean, Bronson has a unique pull that I don't think someone, even someone like Willis, 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 <laughs> Willis. Bruce Willis. <laughs> Bruce Willis. <laughs> Bruce, will, will, he, will he give a shit? Will he give a shit this time will around? Will he or <laughs> So, uh, Bronson, like I said, he had this unique pull about him that I don't know if Willis has. You know, he was this older guy, but he he looked like he could be a villain, but he was a good guy, and um, it was just a unique thing. Bronson was unique in a lot of ways. And for, like, an action hero who was, like, an older man. This seems like a movie that should be darker than what it appears to be. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's all these lame jokes. You're cop locked yeah. and ready to rock, or whatever the fuck that lady says. Yeah, the stupid car joke, that was pretty cringy. So something to Jack. Hey, meet my friend Jack. Oh yeah, he's like, uh no, I'm not gonna kill you, Jack is or something. Jack like is, yeah. Jacking off. Am I mean, compared I'm, to some of the badass one-liners in other Death Wish films? Like, that that really sucks. <laughs> I'm not going to kill you, Jack is. Compared to, like, you, were, you, you, you believe in God? Well, you're going to meet him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he'll never come to the <laughs> epicness of Death Wish 3. I know that. But, another side note, the fact that MGM, it's okay with this, but they won't do Bill and Ted 3. Because instead they yeah. want to do a reboot. That's really that's really irritating. And then what I've read about Bill and Ted Three, I want to see it. Like Ed Solomon is really passionate about it. 
He wants to, you know, they already have a title, Bill and Ted Face the Music. And there's a great idea that they have where older Bill and Ted go back in time and they meet their younger selves. Like the whole thing, we're like, 69, dude. And then they have this whole sort of moment, which I think would be pretty clever, pretty fun. And I like the idea of older Bill and Ted. You know, not they haven't wrote, they have not wrote that big song yet. And that'd be fun. And, and, and there just isn't, for me personally, you can't have another Bill and Ted. Okay, they tried that in the shitty TV series that had like six episodes on Fox. <laughs> Didn't work then, and, I, and it's not going to work here. Like, you're not going to replace Keanu and Alex. No. I'm sure they'll try, though. <laughs> I, think, well, I think what Ed and company should do is kickstart it. Like, put it on Kickstarter or Indiegogo. I mean, look what happened with that, uh, what, what was it, um, Veronica Mars movie. That was kickstarted, wasn't it? Yeah. So do that with Bill and Ted 3. Worth a try. Yeah. I mean, I'd rather see Bill and Ted 3 than Death Wish, the Death Wish remake. Or I know other... at one point Stallone was attached to it. Yeah. Which... I don't know if... Am I happy he didn't do it? I don't know. Maybe. Because I think he was attached to it, and he was going to direct it, too, which that's better than Eli Roth, that's for sure. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, I'd be more curious about that than fucking Bullet to the Head. Yeah. So, instead of Bullet to the Head, he could have wrote, he could direct and start in that. I think that would have been better. Because it could have been, like, Get Carter, but, like, a vigilante version of it. Like, that's, a, that's an interesting what if. Yeah. Yeah, now that you, yeah, I would rather have seen that than this bullshit. Um, who, again, maybe it would be okay, but... Maybe it will right be now, a decent movie. Maybe it'll surprise... I'll check it out. I mean, it's Bruce Willis, and it's, you know, I have a movie pass, so my voice just cracked. It's like, oh, movie pass. <laughs> uh, uh, but, uh... <laughs> I like Bruce Willis to make a comeback, but... Maybe that's a bad see. sign. <laughs> yeah. Your voice is disagreeing with you. <laughs> but after Death Wish, animated films like No Malone, the title fucking tells you... How sh lame it Wasn't there a sounds. shitty horror film called No Malone? Not that I know of. I'm thinking there was. Like that's that's br that's bringing that's ring it bringing that's ringing a bell. I know there were movies like Rumpelstiltskin and <laughs> those kind of films. Uh, but A Wrinkle in Time, some Disney movie with Oprah. <laughs> and yeah, there is. It's from 2015. <laughs> okay, first time I've heard of that. Well, for good reason, it gets a 3.5 out of 10 on IMDb, so. <laughs> well, so is the main order, so who knows, but. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but still, it probably is shit. A Wrinkle in Time. A Wrinkle in Time. I don't know what. It starts Oprah uh, Winfrey, so no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like Oprah? You're, you're not a I, Oprah Winfrey fan? <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't trust her. I think, <laughs> I think she has something hiding. She's, she has some empire ready to rise up and do something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Oprah. You got no, Reese Witherspoon, Chris Pine, Zach Galifianakis. I'm just not. I don't really care about A Wrinkle in Time. I, I think I, I, I think I read the book for class when I was in a, in a junior high or something, but I don't remember much else. And I think there was a TV movie based on the book that Disney did, but this is a bigger budgeted version. Yeah, over a hundred million. I've never heard of uh, Ava DuVernay in terms of her directing. She did some episodes of Scandal, directed some documentary called 13th, Oh, she directed Selma. Duvernay became Sorry, the first... Saw. This is actually said on Wikipedia, folks. Duvernay became the first black woman to direct a live-action film with a budget over over $100 million. So that well, made news. You know, good for her. I hope I hope okay. she does a good job. I hope, I, hope it's, I, hope it's, I hope it surprises me. And I hope it's good. I mean, I, I'm not... I, I'm not usually like, oh, I want everything to suck. You know? <laughs> well, of course. We thought Pain and Game would suck. That was a good movie. Yeah. But it just doesn't seem like it's my type of movie. I'm not... 
that interested in it that much. And I didn't really, I'm not really huge on the book it's based on either. Then we have Gringo. Yeah, Charlize Theron, Joel Edgerton, who was in Bright, Charlton Copley. Uh, the trailer just looked like a mess. I, maybe it's just how the trailer was edited. Like, maybe the movie doesn't look that bad. It sounds like the editing was all over the place in the trailer, and then, I don't know, I mean, the humor didn't really do that much for me either, and the lead guy, I don't know. Yeah, his main fame, he was in movies like The Butler, and Selma, oh yeah, he was in Selma playing Martin Luther King Jr., which got a lot of award nominations. Don't know. Can't say much about it. I like Get the Gringo with Mel Gibson. That's a good movie, but I don't know much about Gringo. Or Thoroughbreds. I guess the last film, Anton Yelchin, that's going to be released. Uh -huh. Drama thriller. Anton Yelchin. Sad that he passed away. I that guess was such a terrible, shitty thing. I mean, I mean, it always, you know, anytime anybody dies, it's awful, no matter what. Mm -hmm. But it's just how it happened. You know, because it wasn't it wasn't his fault or anything like that, or it wasn't like something something that somebody else did. You know, it was it was just some freak accident. Yeah, it was one of those things where it was uh, a car. Pretty much, it was on a steep incline, and it rolled back and it trapped him. And yeah. Um, yeah, it was just uh, sort of a freak accident. And the car rolled back, and and I was, was really bad. starting to see a lot of promise in him too. So that that really sucked. Yeah, it's too bad. I hope he's good in it. Yeah. Uh, the Hurricane Heist. Which, I know a trailer just came out. I didn't see the trailer. I should have before this. But yeah, I didn't see the trailer yet either. It sounds like Deal Force. Yeah, it does. <laughs> like they took the script for Deal Force, that Stallone movie, and they used it for this. Uh, I'm not sure if that's really going to be the poster, because it looks like something from... Uh, Twister. It's a tornado. It's not a hurricane. It looks like something you would see in TV Guide. Like a yeah. ad for a movie. But yeah, but it's, it's not even a hurricane. <laughs> yeah, I know. I see a tornado on the poster. Good by Rob Cohen, who did the first Fast He's and the Furious. He's really hit and works. miss. Yeah, because I enjoyed Daylight, uh, but at the same time, he did The Mummy, Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. Stealth, I had fun with. <laughs> it's yeah. dumb, but I dumb had fun, fun with. But but yeah. He also did. Um... Well, I haven't seen Dragon Art in a while, so I can't say much. But still, this movie. A team of tech hackers embarked on a $600 million robbery from a U.S. Mint facility at the same time a disastrous Category 5 hurricane set to strike. Remaining people in a deserted beach town, <laughs> sounds like deal force. <laughs> meteorologist, a treasury agent, and the meteorologist's ex-marine brother. Together, they not only must survive the hurricane, but stop the mastermind thieves from accomplishing the high school. Yeah, it's gale force. <laughs> Sally then just gets Stallone for one of them. But Instead you have Toby Rob Cohen's worked with Stallone. <laughs> he, with Daylight. Rob Cohen worked with Stallone. He could have yeah, Stallone. I, this would be better. If, you know, I'd, I'd be more interested in it if but, Stallone was starring in it, or Lundgren, or Van Damme. Or, but what were you saying about the lead? Toby Kebbell is playing the lead, and I don't mind him. Like I, I liked, I actually liked his Doctor Doom. I know a lot of people hate his Doctor Doom, but I, you know... I was like, it's about time Dr. Doom is actually intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I don't know. I mean, it just seems like... I mean, you also have Randy Couture in it, and when it's not an Expendables movie, usually, when he's in it, it usually sucks, too. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, hijacked. <laughs> oh, Toby Kebbell, he was in Constable Island as well. Yeah, I liked him in that. He had a bit role in that. And then you have Maggie Grace. 
okay, Toby Kill, he was the guy that got eaten, and then yeah. the skull got puked up with his dog tag. I mean, you know Maggie what? Grace from the Fog remake, and, and the Taken films. Yeah. But you know what? I'll check the trailer sometime, and... Yeah, so will I. You know what? If it's, any, if it's as fun as Into the Storm, I'll check it out. I mean, yeah. I like Into the Storm. That was a film that a lot of people hated, but I thought that was a lot of fun. Not as good as Twister, but not many movies. Yeah, I like that too. Is, but, you know, if it's like Into the Storm, there's not a lot of movies that deal with that with a decent budget, so... You know, at least but it's the not... But title, the title totally sounds like something from, like, a 70s movie. <laughs> Yeah, like the hurricane TV heist, yeah. movie of the week. <laughs> the yeah. hurricane heist. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it'll flop. I'm calling yeah. it right here, it'll flop. It but, might not even get in theaters. Um, yeah, for all I know, it'll be pushed back. And like Geostorm got pushed back, which I still haven't seen that movie, but no one saw that movie. Next one is a sequel called The Strangers Pray at Night. I didn't like the first one. I don't like the first one either. I know a lot of people like that one. I just thought it was overrated, and it was like, oh, another home invasion movie. Yay. <laughs> Which I'm sure this is too. I mean, it's up. Uh, they get stranded in a deserted mobile home park and stopped by three masked individuals. Oh, so does this take place in Iowa? <laughs> <laughs> no, probably not. In Ireland? I said oh, Iowa. Iowa, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, if Ireland. It, if it takes place here, they're not going to last long. Uh, they'll die within five minutes, considering the people around here. <laughs> but <laughs> Strangers Pray at Night was. Folks, was anyone really looking forward to a sequel to a film like this that was released 10 years ago? Yeah, exactly. Was people really streaming for a sequel? Really? Were they pounding the table for more strangers? Or is this is like the Descent Part 2 sequel. Uh, I heard that one was awful. It was something awful. Something about shit or something like that? Yeah, the characters fall in a pile of shit and we get to see one of the creatures literally take a shit. Bend over and take a shit on them. So, feel free to watch that if you want, folks. <laughs> Tomb Raider with the bow and arrow and I actually like the first Tomb Raider movie. Like I like the one with Angelina Jolie. I saw it in the theater years ago. Yeah, I liked um, it. I don't love it, but but I do like it. I think it's one of the better video game movies. The yeah. sequel though is a huge letdown. In more ways than one. Uh Cradle of Life, I think right. that's what it's called, right? Yeah, Cradle of Life. It'll cradle you to sleep. <laughs> It wasn't nearly as exciting or as fun as the first. It was disappointing because it was such a lackluster sequel to a solid first film. But also the director, I mean, John DeBont just continued at his downward spiral. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, this one doesn't look that much better. Like to me, it just looks like cutscenes from the video game. Yeah, it's based more on the 2013 sort of reboot of the video mm -hmm. game. That's why she has more of the bow and arrow like she did in that game. Yeah. And, and it just, yeah, it just looks I didn't like know the who video the game. fuck Alicia Vikander is. Like, she won an Oscar. I'm like, for she what She was movie? in Ex Machina. She played the android. It, it, she just looks miscast in this. Like, everything I see in terms of the footage from this, the trailers... She just is not right for this particular role. Like she doesn't even even look like she's having fun, or she really wants to do this. It just looks like a, well, I need the money type role. Even though she won an Oscar, and that seems to happen a lot. Like there there are cases just because you win the Oscar doesn't necessarily mean that your career is going to be full of like Oscar worthy roles for the end of time. A lot of times it's the opposite. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, there's the director is named some guy named Roar, or Uthog. Uthog. Or whatever. Utenagen. You got Walton Goggins. Sounds like, I don't know, it's like relative Uyr from Simpsons. <laughs> the myth of chocolate. <laughs> Nick Frost has a bit role in it. I just, 
it just doesn't really look that good. It, it looks like another bad video game movie to me. It looked so generic in a weird yeah. way. It was, okay, she's in the water, and... The uh, posters are terrible, too. A crap version of the perfect storm for the water scenes, the boat scenes, and then CGI overload. I mean, even the first Lara Croft Tomb Raider movie had it had CG, but it had quite a bit of practical. Yeah, a lot of wire foo stuff. In the mansion where mm -hmm. you have she's on the bungee thing going around, and, and the stunt work was. Stunt work, not with the seat, you know, not with a computer double, like the stuff with the motorcycles and things like that. And the producer told IGN in an interview that he may oversee a film universe with Just Cause, Hitman, Tomb Raider, Deus Ex, uh, and don't, Thief. Don't count your chickens before they hatch. Exactly. <laughs> don't pull a dark universe. We'll see what I mean. Maybe it'll be successful. Maybe because... it'll, maybe it'll be better than the trailers. Sometimes that happens, but these trailers yeah. did nothing to get get me excited for it. And Alicia Vikander, I just I just don't think she's right for this role. I mean, Angelina Jolie, she looked the part, and she had an attitude about her that Laura Croft needs. And even with the reboot, Laura Croft, you still need a certain attitude with this character. And for me, I, I just I just it's one of those things where it's like. I wish they did Uncharted. Like they tried to do Uncharted for all this time, and I think Chris Pratt is a perfect guy to play that type of role. And then they just never really had, you know, owned, you know, went for it. Instead, they want to do like another Indiana Jones or reboot that and have Chris Pratt play Indy. And I, I just yeah, Steven Spielberg wants to do Indiana Jones Five next, for what I understand. And he's gonna do a remake of West Side Story. Oh, dude. Yeah, I heard about that, whatever. I didn't see the original, so... I did, and it's a classic. So, okay. I... That's really... I don't get it. I don't Another know why, remake. of all people, he's remaking West Side Story, like, a classic remake. I, I mean, a classic musical. <laughs> so, th and this will definitely not be a classic remake. Damn remakes just fuck with my brain cells, apparently. Yeah, so, can't... the next one's a film called I Can Only Imagine... And I, I'm probably never watching it anytime soon. But Dennis Quaid is in the cast, so, you know. So you gotta give it a watch sometime, because it's Dennis Quaid. <laughs> exactly. One day, <laughs> one year down the road, you'll do a Dennis Although Quaid. Although it's, it's, it's a song, it's, it's, it's a film based on the story behind a song called I Can Only Imagine, which is the most played contemporary Christian song of all time, so. Yeah. Really? That'll be fun. <laughs> After that, not much I can say about Love, Simon, because I don't know who the fuck Simon is, so I have no reason <laughs> to love him. And the other one, I only mention it, Seven Days in Intep, because the director of Mike's favorite film, Robocop. <laughs> uh, Jose Padilla. Flight from Israel to Paris was hijacked. What happened next changed the course of history. Can't say much. Rosamund Pike. I like her, but I don't like the directors. <laughs> of course, Robocop 2014. Then you have something, it's an untitled A24 horror film. Don't know what it is. They're not giving, it, giving us any info. But that's the group that did The Witch mm -hmm. and The Babadook. Mm -hmm. so. No, I don't think they did The Babadook. Oh. I think that was... Uh, foreign film that was released by uh, Scream Factory. Oh, okay. Yeah, they did They did The Witch. The Witch. Which is, they, they also released Green Room. Oh, they helped release Tusk? Well, fuck them. Then. Yeah. <laughs> they also released Ex Machina. Oh, and It Comes at I, Night. Yeah, a lot of great winners here. I know you're more. I know you're a fan of It Comes at Night, but for me, I'm like, oh, It Comes at Night, Green Room, and the... You know, <laughs> I didn't see The Witch, but... Well, you should be glad you didn't see The Witch. Well, everyone loves that movie, Mike. Come on. You're just a hater, right? <laughs> yeah, the guy, I do like slow burn horror, but not when you the like fire comes at night. lit. You like It Comes at Night, right? Yeah, I That's like that. That's a slow burn so... movie. There you go. But, so, yeah, this, this, this studio seems to be like, 
the go-to studio for hipsters, I've noticed. Oh, really? It, it's like, oh, and A24, all right, I'm definitely looking forward to whatever they're going to come up with. I didn't even know their fucking name, so that's how much I knew about it. I'm like, what the hell is A24? Is... So we'll see, but chances are it'll probably be another critically acclaimed horror film that all these critics will be creaming themselves over. I'll see it, and I'll be like, this is overrated and shitty, just like The Witch. Or Fingers maybe crossed like it's not the case, but... Or maybe it comes at night. Yeah, maybe it'll be like that. We'll see. <laughs> or it'll be like Tusk, and no one should see. <laughs> the next big one is Pacific Rim Job 2 Uprising. With their poster saying, Rise Up. <laughs> yeah. And I know the song, I believe it was Tupac. Do Rise up I and die. smack this movie in the face. <laughs> Get it up till I die. Of all the films that he had a sequel, and this DC No Hellboy 3, no Dread 2, Pacific Rim Job 2. Because we need more Rim Jobs. <laughs> Which I thought wasn't that successful of a movie, but apparently it didn't matter. <laughs> Well, it was. It did underperform a little bit, but I guess the studio is just like robots, Transformers. There's no tra well. Technically, there's a Transformers movie, but we'll get to that <laughs> at December or something. But uh, Bumblebee. But like, hey, there's none in the summer, so I swear that when I saw the trailer and it got to the end with them, I swear I was going to hear the Power Rangers music. Because it's like, dun, 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 they're in their, dun, dun. what's it called, Megazords? Yeah. And they're color-coded, and they yeah. pull out a different weapon, and as I pan to each go, one, pull go out the Power weapon. Rangers! <laughs> and I will admit, I like John Boyega more as an actor than the guy yeah. in the first movie. Um, so Maybe it'd be better than the first movie. Maybe it'd be like, hey, let's put in more action and less bullshit. Trying to rip off fucking Top Gun. An Independence Day. An Independence Day. So, hey, maybe it'd be better. Maybe it'd be a better sequel. Because the Pacific but... Rim, Rim did have some of the robot fights with the monsters were fun. But yeah. the, the other shit just wasn't fun to me. The Top Gun, Wing Commander, you know. It was more wannabe and the lead guy was boring. and yeah. His character didn't give a shit about his story. Didn't give a shit about his. And then the whole plot dying. is pretty moronic. Let's build a giant wall to keep out these giant monsters. And then, of course, it doesn't work. <laughs> then now let's build robots and fight these giant monsters. So you know, maybe this is trailers really didn't do much for me though. Yeah. So we'll see. The advertising didn't do much, but maybe. Maybe this will be room for improvement. We'll see. Well, one day we'll see. I mean, the director, I've never heard of this guy, Stephen S. D. Knight. He worked a lot on the Spartacus TV stuff. Oh, sure, HBO. I never saw him. <laughs> yeah. And I think he took over on Daredevil. And... Show which I still need to see. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, me, yeah, me too. I haven't seen it. People have said I should... But Iowa Dogs. Uh, Wes Anderson film. It's a good cast. Hmm. Bill Murray, Brian Cranston, Jeff Goldblum, F. Murray Abraham, Harvey Keitel. Apparently, it's like animated. Yeah. There's a poster of it right there. Edward Norton's it's, also in it. Bob Balaban. Yeah, it's set in a dystopian future in which dogs have been quarantined on remote. On, a, on the remote eponymous island due to canine flu. Isle of Dogs follows five local dogs, Chief, Rex, Boss, Duke, and King, and they are fed up with their isolated existence until a boy named Atari Kobayashi, I like that name, Atari <laughs> Kobayashi, like the Kobayashi Maru, yeah, ventures to the island to search for his dog's spots. Atari receives their help and then will protect him from the Japanese authorities who have come to retrieve him. Now I'm going to go off topic real quick just to sure. warn some people. The Atari... Speaking of Atari, there's a documentary that just came out, which is about Atari, which I haven't seen yet, but I, I definitely think might be something that some some people listening might be interested in. Because um, Atari is one of those things where they were very important to video games, and 
they also led to their own demise eventually, but it wasn't necessarily entirely their fault. But um, there was Atari Game Over is another documentary, but there's one that's coming out. There's one that came out recently, and I, I need to look. It's called Easy to Learn, Hard to Master, and it's about Atari. Okay. So, but Isle of Dogs sounds interesting. I mean, Wes Anderson is a, a pretty talented director in terms of, you know, really doing a lot of interesting, strange things. And, I mean, the cast, I mean, even Fisher Stevens is also in the cast, Garth Johansson, Ken Watanabe, Harvey Keitel. Yeah, it's definitely I mean, I, a director I want to give another chance to, because I saw Life Required with Steve Suzu like once, but that was like mm -hmm. when it came out, and I want to give that another shot. So uh, I just I, like the concept; it's yeah. it's it's different. Good cast. I mean, I, I, the cast I, I mean I'll, I'd watch that over you know Uprising or Sherlock Gnomes for sure. God, Sherlock Gnomes. <laughs> No, speaking of Sherlock Gnomes, that's the next one. <laughs> Sherlock Gnomes. James Macadamia. Sequel to Gnomeo and Juliet. Oh, that's a sequel to that. Okay. Yeah. That got a sequel. Why? Yep. I don't know. But James McAvoy, Emily Blunt, Johnny Depp. Yeah, he played Sherlock Gnomes. Ma Michael Caine? Yep. Ozzy Osbourne? Trailer for this was atrocious. Cringe-inducing. Of course, it's a Nomeo and Juliet sequel. Horrible attempts at jokes. It's a Nomeo and Juliet bad. sequel that the world didn't need. But of all the sequels we can't get, we couldn't... I guess it made money, I guess. And I didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Fuck sure. And the knows. next one is a film called Unsane. Steven Soderbergh's attempt at psychological horror. Yep. It's going to be as good as his attempt at Outbreak, which is <laughs> Contagion, which was lame and boring as fuck. Is it going to be as good as his other movies? They're supposed to be so great that I'm, I'm not really into. Like, I, I'm just, I've never been a big fan of him. Me neither, because his attempt at action film was Haywire, and that was boring. And I know that, I think they did something to Gina Carano's voice, and it was. I wasn't into Aaron Brockovich. Traffic, I there's some good acting, but it wasn't my cup of tea. I liked the first Ocean's Eleven, so I'll give him that. I mean, right. Ocean's Twelve was okay. Solaris, I thought was boring. I don't mind films like Aaron Brockovich and Traffic was there. You know, like you said, good acting. Solaris, yeah, it's it's there. Uh, Side Ocean's effects I wasn't big to that either. Definitely didn't care for Contagion. Contagion I'll just watch I didn't Outbreak. Like. Contagion I didn't like. Haywire I didn't like. Magic Mike? Nah. I didn't see. I just looked at his, like, his attempt at action was Haywire and I thought it failed. His attempt at disease movie, Contagion failed, so this is his attempt as a horror movie. And and the plot just doesn't interest me. This is what the plot is. A young woman is involuntarily committed to a mental institution where she is, she is confronted by her greatest fear. But is it real or is it a product of her delusion? Is it real or is it memorized? <laughs> the only thing that interests I mean, me is Joshua Leonard is in it. And being a fan of the Blair Witch Project, like, cool, we got work. <laughs> but Amy Irving's also in the cast, too. Who's that? Oh. She's been in a, yeah. oh, yeah. Amy Irving from... Uh, the Carrie. She's Carrie. From the, the Fury and the Carrie. Yeah. <laughs> she was in Carrie and the Fury. That's right, Carrie. That's, okay. I'm like, is that... Okay, that is that Amy Irving. Okay. But, yeah. Uh, Steven Soderbergh. I'll wait for a trailer. I'll wait for a trailer. Yeah, it just... The, the plot just doesn't... Another, like, insane, like, how much you want to bet it's going to be something where, oh, no, it is all in her mind. It is all a delusion. So it's like Shutter whatever. Island. Yeah. <laughs> Wish I did not like Shutter Island. This is a film called Final Portrait, directed by Stanley Tucci. And then you have a film called Midnight Sun, which I'm only mentioning it because it stars 
Patrick Schwarzenegger. Ah, My son is in the movie. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. Midnight Sun, go see it. If he Do it now. If he narrated the movie like that, <laughs> uh, I'd watch it. But other than that, kind of liked his commentary for Terminator Three. Well, that, yeah, that'd be he great. Just narrates like, the movie really. Charlie, Charlie goes over here and he goes to the field and he meets up with Katie and they fall in love. Just an <laughs> just an audio book of Arnold. It was really what it, the next big one is Ready Player One, which I did a stream oh, recently, yeah. and you mentioned the nostalgia, this movie. The, the motion picture. Yeah, <laughs> I had to fix my chair there for those who wonder that sound is. That was sort of the yep nostalgia. <laughs> I mean, I saw the recent trailer. I'd be lying if I said it. It's a bit interesting, just for yeah. the eye candy. And all the stuff in there, which I don't know how they got away with all that. Yeah, I mean, it there it definitely. It's kind of like Willy Wonka meets Willy Wonka meets like Tron or something. Yeah, I'm just not it's sure about the It's an interesting concept, and it could be fun just for eye candy, and I'll probably see it. Yeah, but I just it just it does seem kind of hollow to me. Feel, I mean, kind of empty. Like, oh, just look at all these popular, iconic characters. Mm -hmm. You know, some of them, you might blink and miss them. And it, mm -hmm. it, it, it is. It's nostalgia of the movie. And I'm worried that that's, there's not going to be a lot of substance here. There's just right. going to be a lot of just nostalgia moments. And that's it. And I, I just feel that right. it, it's going to need more than that for me personally. Yeah. And I'm not sold on the lead guy either, so from what I've seen in the trailer, so that's another thing. Yeah, so far in the lead, at least based on the advertising, seems pretty wooden or bland. Pretty bland. Bland yeah. is a better word. And the thing is, is like back in the day, like imagine if you had a Michael J. Fox, like and when uh, when he was his age, and this. can you imagine Michael J. Fox in Especially, this type of movie? That and then have the DeLorean in there that would, like I just picture. That type. I don't know. Yeah. I just, I guess, I just picture like if this was made. I don't know. I just, I picture like if somehow you had a time machine, and you had Michael <laughs> J. Fox come back. Yeah. It is a uh, like Back to Future two days, and uh -huh. he was in this movie, and then really not being a DeLorean, which would be fun. Yeah. Which would make sense for his character. Well, you I mean, know, I think there's I, better. You know, Tom Holland. He has personality. Like I think he he'd be good in this role. Yeah. Uh, the guy from Baby Driver. I know you might be a little bit older, but you could make it work. Um, Maybe. Hmm. There's just there's just the type of stuff where, I, I don't know, maybe Ty Sheridan will surprise me. It's just one of those things where this seems like a pretty bland lead that kind of reminds me of the bland lead that was in Tron Legacy. <laughs> well, yeah, does it need to be a kid? Could it be an older guy? Yeah. I mean, That'd be interesting. I mean, it's based on a book, so they're trying to make it just like the book, so I, oh, okay. I, I get it. I haven't read the book, so maybe it's a younger guy in the book. Okay. Yeah, it's a younger guy in the book. Gotcha. gotcha. But Steven Spielberg, you know, is directing it, you know, but he hasn't done it, he hasn't directed anything that's really blown me away in a long time, so. Well, he did The Post, which I didn't see with Tom Hanks, and... I like Indiana Jones 4. Yeah, I like yeah. I like King of the Crystal Skull. But, you know, we'll see about Ready Player One. But yeah, I, I do what you're saying. I hope there's more substance than just the... Uh, you know, it needs a, I hope it has a good heart and... Yeah, I hope it has a good heart and I, have, I hope it has good characters. Like, so then it makes these stakes actually mean something. And there's actually some genuine interest... In what's going on, other than just the superficial interest. So maybe if it was the kids from Stranger Things. Yeah, someone like that, totally. Yeah. Okay. I know, folks, I haven't seen Stranger Things. I know. I'm late to the party. I'm like the only person on earth that hasn't seen it. I think you'd I like it. I, I, I want to one day. Like I, just, I don't have Netflix, but. Uh, 
Ready Player One, Tyler Perry has another fucking movie, fuck him and his holes. <laughs> God's Not Dead, there's another fucking movie, like the third, fourth one, fuck that and its holes. Gemini. Uh, mystery it's thriller. It's a thriller that we don't know nothing about. Know nothing about. Well, well you gotta tell you about your favorite movie, Blockers. <laughs> John Fuck Luna. that shit. Blockers. This looks like, once again, let's continue the trend of these crass and cringe comedies. It's not, and I don't even want to call them comedies anymore. They're crash and cringe movies. Like, there's no comedy here. It's just crass and cringe. The cringe is John Cena trying to act and being the lead in the in a film. The crass is shit like ass beer because it's so fucking hilarious. John Cena's uh, chugging some beer through his ass and some splashes of Ike Barron holes. And Ike Barron's like, oh, ass beer! And, and, and hilarious. Does John Cena... Out loud. Funny. Worked for the aliens and they live. Like, did he somehow <laughs> manipulate people to thinking he has talent? That now he's doing all these movie roles. Like, he's in the new Bumblebee movie. He, they want him for Dude Newton. You know who he's saying? You can't see me. You can't see him because he's invisible. <laughs> you can't fucking act. Like, of all the people, you don't get him to play Dude Newton. You don't get him for a Bumblebee movie. Duke Nukem is this a terrible casting choice. He, he doesn't have the charisma to pull that off. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, does he have some kind of deal? Does Vince McMahon also own part of Hollywood? Is that how <laughs> WWE is still in business? He has some secret part. Like, he wants to do the XFL again. Is this some secret, like, businesses <laughs> with Hollywood that he's able to have all his money still? I wouldn't be surprised. He has some secret <laughs> do the deal XFL on the side. again after the success of that. <laughs> Fucking bullshit, P dumbass football thing. Uh, and now he's got John Wiener, John Cena, John Fema to do. You've fucking seen the movies. trailer, right? Yeah, it's fucking <laughs> awful. John Cena can't act, just like he can't wrestle, he can't talk, he can't do anything. He has no fucking talent. Fuck and John Cena. A stupid, it's a stupid plot, too. It's about adults who want to cock block their daughters at prom. Put his cock in his daughter. So <laughs> understand how crash comedies are nowadays. Fuck this movie. Block the movie like you blocked someone off of Facebook. <laughs> block just block you from theater so no one can see it. You can't and see and it because you're not if, fucking there. And if if I ever got around to seeing it, it's something that would easily just be blocked from my memory like minutes after I saw it. It'd be like this, all these other shitty comedies I've seen from twenty seventeen. It'd be this year's fist fight. <laughs> Or Bad Mom's Christmas. <laughs> the next one I'm really looking forward to. It's called A Quiet Place. Mm -hmm. It's a drama horror thriller. It's directed by John Krasinski. It stars John Krasinski as well as Emily Blunt. I like Emily Blunt. And I like the idea. It yeah. takes place in a post-apocalyptic future. Uh, there's this family. They're living in a far, on a farm. And there is something going on outside where there's this these creatures or something. Or some kind of some something some element don't know exactly what it is but it's attracted to sound mm -hmm. so if you make any sort of sound it'll come after you so i don't breathe but hopefully a lot better. <laughs> no 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 uh no hair in the cum shots <laughs> no uh turkey basters yeah no okay. turkey basters full of cum don't don't make that like your money shot like that's that's the scariest thing you have to offer Turkey basters full of cum, but um, yeah, or maybe a little bit of here no evil as well, because the whole sort of thing where, um, but that's a different one because that's when somebody is deaf. But right. this is like, you know, can't make a noise. Tremors, like tremors, because like more serious tremors. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like the trailer. It didn't give away that much, which is what trailers should do. And I'm not going to watch any more trailers because that tra that teaser was so good. I don't I don't want to I don't want to have anything ruined. I want to watch the second trailer and they'll show the monster or whatever it is. I, you right. know, I just I'll right. leave that if there is for when movie. I see the movie. If, if there is, show, if they show one, or if it's like it comes at night, <laughs> where there is no monster, it was never a monster. <laughs> well, some kind of disease or something, but yeah. Well, I know, I just meant some of the trailers, they may seem like it'd be something else. Yeah. 
but I look forward to it. It looks interesting. It looks like uh, Emily Blunt was good in Edge of Tomorrow. Yes. I still haven't seen Sicario, but I've heard her themes. From She's really good in that, too. So, Quiet Place looks like a pretty decent. I, will, I like the idea. The trailer, like you said, it was vague, but interesting. I look forward to it. Uh, Show Dogs, which <laughs> is not an animated film, but... It's, I can't even believe this movie is being released in 2018. Yeah, Will Arnett is a human, and some of the dogs are voiced by people like Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> yeah, for some reason. Ludacris. This was Gabriel like, Iglesias. This was like a spinoff to Beverly Hills Chihuahua. Yeah. I mean, it's that kind of it's talking animals and live action. In a world where humans and sentient dogs coexist, a macho but lonely Rottweiler police dog, voiced by Ludacris, is ordered to go undercover as a primped show dog in a prestigious dog show with his human partner Frank. So, this is fucking miscongeniality with dogs? Yes. Yeah, I saw the trailer, and it is every bit as shitty as you would think it would be. So, it's Beverly Hills Chihuahua meets miscongeniality. One of the big jokes was the dog voiced by Ludacris was getting a bikini wax or something. He had his asshole waxed. So, to give you a teaser of what you'll feel like when you watch the movie? <laughs> exactly. Money it's wasted. from the director of Beverly Hills Chihuahua and the Smurfs movies. So. Of course. So That's a great director. <laughs> Roger Gosnell. Fucking movie. <laughs> of all the movies I get, you know, money to get made, and that's one of them. That's why Hollywood sucks. <laughs> uh, you were never really here. Joaquin Phoenix. It's a thriller. I saw the trailer for that. I saw I, I saw it because there was a lot of buzz for it online. Talk about how brutal it looked and all that. And I was just like, hmm. huh? All right. <laughs> <laughs> An unfinished, me. unfinished version of the film premiered at the San of Trans Film Festival and competition. And he, Joaquin Phoenix won the war for best actor there. Uh, traumatized veteran, unafraid of violence, tracks down missing girls for a living. When a job spins out of control, his nightmares overtake him as a conspiracy is uncovered, leading so to what may be it's like a version of The Flock? With Richard Gere? Remember he was hunting, you know, okay. tracking down No, I people, just, you said you know? a film version of The Flock. I'm like, yeah, The Flock yeah. is a film. No, I said it's a version, oh, of, a version. kind of like The Flock. Because uh, he tracks down these people and whatever. I guess kind of. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to be pretentious or not. <laughs> I don't know. Could it be. sounds like a pretentious title. You know, it was at the Cannes Film Festival. I don't know. We'll see. It, it's not something that, like, I'm really gung-ho about. From Amazon I'm like, Studios. I'm like, oh, I gotta see, we, you were never really here. But, I mean, if I had to pick between that and uh, show dogs, uh, or blockers, I, I'll, I'll go see you were, never, you were never really here. Totally. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> then we got one called Chappaquiddick, which, I like films that are based on true stories, and, and this one might be interesting it's uh based on uh the case of ted kennedy when he drives his car into the water in chappaquiddick uh, in 1969 and there his passenger a young campaign a young campaign strategist mary joe kopechny is killed in the car accident hmm. nevertheless kennedy does not immediately decide to call the police and so there's this whole sort of thing like well was there something behind that or whatever might be an interesting drama Maybe. Uh, truth or Dare, a Blumhouse movie where you gotta tell the truth or you die, pretty much. This, this poster is shitty. <laughs> I mean, they got this actress who's looking at looking at the camera, and I guess she's trying to act and look like she's surprised or something, but. <laughs> It's not very effective. It looks like it looks like just as I don't know. It just doesn't look right. And then you have this like awful Photoshop question mark. Yeah, I mean, uh, 
Yeah, it's like this purple question mark. The pink question mark. Yeah. Pink question mark. Why the hell would anyone want to see the fucking movie based <laughs> on that poster? That's the question right there. Why see this movie? The trailer didn't... I, I saw it, and I've already forgotten the trailer. So like a lot of Blumhouse movies. Uh, I don't know. But from the producer, Happy Death Day, Death Day and Get Out, which I didn't mind those movies, so... Yeah, I like those movies, so... But I don't think... The, I was in this the movie, cast I don't like that. <laughs> Could be surprised. The cast, yeah, the cast does not give me a lot of Hope. warm and fuzzy feelings, because I don't remember any of them. Oh, and this is from the director of Never Back Down. <sighs> <laughs> oh yeah that classic movie that got people confused with the other <laughs> classic movie fighting with Channing Tatum because it's like which movie is which <laughs> <laughs> yeah and which movie is worse um this guy uh, we also did Cry Wolf the PG-13 yeah slash kind of slash movie with John Bon Jovi mm -hmm. Uh, I haven't seen that film forever since it came out. Well, probably be P it'll probably be PG-13, Truth or Dare as well. That'd be surprising considering how much R-rated stuff is popular, but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Like Ouija. <sighs> For some reason made $100 million. Yeah. The next movie is Overboard. <laughs> I mean, remake. really, like, the, this Truth or Dare, I'll, I'll see that, okay? Okay. You know, this is the dare, Truth or Dare, will you go see Truth or Dare, or Overboard, like, I'll, I'll go see Truth or Dare, like, even if you dare me to see Overboard, I'll, I'll just, I'll just go see Truth or Dare instead. How come? Because <laughs> Overboard is a remake of one of my favorite comedies, and it looks absolutely god-awful. Why? Well, first off, it's one of those. It's just one of those lazy gender swapped remakes, where it's like, oh, oh, it's, instead of the rich person being a woman, it's a man this time, and the down on their luck worker is a girl, and uh, <clears throat> terrible writing, and uh, just two leads who have no chemistry and. There's no reason to even make this movie. Because, honestly, Goldie and Kurt, you're not going to replicate that kind of chemistry. That's like legendary chemistry. And Anna Faris and Eugenio Debre Derbez, or whoever the fuck he is, definitely don't have that. I, I don't know. Yeah. Toss this movie overboard. <laughs> Should have never made this remake. I remember Eva Longoria was attached to this cast years ago, and then I think they were thinking about having some, like, other actor in it. I don't remember. I know this is a remake that was in the works for a long time. And and, and it should have just been tossed overboard and... Drowned. Left to drown. But no, let's bring this, let's bring this shit into theaters. Of it's going to bomb. Yeah, if it's any like Baywatch, yeah, it'll bomb. And it's directed by a guy who just did a bunch of TV shows and... Yeah, he just did TV shows. Like, he hasn't even directed a movie, it looks like. It's just directed shows. Not much you can say about Overboard. It's another useless, pointless remake that no one looks forward to, so... Wow. I've never seen that before. <laughs> Next one is Beirut. Uh, the, one, the thing that interests... Oh, of course. Been criticized for exploiting negative stereotypes of Arabs, misrepresenting Lebanese history, and cast whitewashing. The film was shot in Morocco and does not feature any Lebanese actors. Oh, wow. In 1980s Beirut, oh, John Hamm, former U.S. Mm -hmm. diplomat, returns to service to save a colleague from the group responsible for the death of his family. The reason I stopped to look at this is the director is Brad Anderson, who did uh, The Machinist, and Session 9. Oh. And I think this is the first action film he's done. 
Oh, he did the call. I haven't seen the call, but... The call was terrible. <laughs> oh, it's this guy who did Session 9 did that? Oh, man. <laughs> Sorry, Brad. Mike says, you fucked up, Brad. <laughs> Anderson, you fucked up. Even though that made a lot of money, which Kidnap should have made, but... I haven't seen I the agree. call, but I have a feeling I'll like Kidnap a lot more than the call. Oh, I, I think you will. <laughs> But yeah, Session 9, The Machinist, I like those. Vanishing on 7th Street, that was pretty bad. Beirut, I mean, I don't know. It probably won't get much in theaters. Probably quickly disappeared to VOD land. Sergeant Stubby, an American hero, the name. <laughs> Could you imagine going to a theater and saying, I don't want a ticket for Sergeant Stubby, and they don't think you're watching a porno. Or exactly. a gay porno. Sergeant Stubby, yep, uh, that's what it's called. That, that's, the por that's the porno version of Sergeant Slaughter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, upcoming computer animated biographical family movie. A stray Boston Terrier who becomes a hero in World War One. 